please come to order and members kindly take their seat. Madam Sergeant at Arms. Madam Speaker, would everyone please rise? It is my distinct honor to present to you the Vermont State Senate. I'd like to call the General uh, Joint Assembly to order. This Joint Assembly is convened pursuant to the provisions of JRS 47, which the clerk shall now read. JRS 47, Joint Resolution providing for a Joint Assembly to vote on the retention of two superior judges and one magistrate. Whereas declarations have been submitted by the following two superior judges that they be retained for another six-year term, Judge John R. Treadwell and Judge Lisa A. Warren, and one magistrate that he be retained for another six-year term, Magistrate Barry E. Peterson. And whereas the procedures of the Joint, Assem the Joint Committee on Judicial Retention require at least one public hearing and the review of information provided by each candidate, and the comments of members of the Vermont Bar and the public, and whereas subsection 608B of Title IV requires the committee to complete its evaluation of judicial performance of the candidates seeking to be retained in office by March 7, 2024, and subsection 10B of Title II requires a vote in joint assembly to be held on March 14, 2024, and whereas subsection 608G of Title IV permits the General Assembly to defer action on the retention of judges to a subsequent Joint Assembly where the committee is not a, when the committee is not able to make a timely recommendation, now therefore be it resolved by the Senate and House of Representatives that the two houses meet in Joint Assembly on Tuesday, March 26, 2024, at 10 o'clock and 30 minutes in the forenoon to vote on the retention of two superior judges and one magistrate. Pursuant to our Constitution and statutes, we are assembled here today in Joint Assembly to cast votes on the retention of two superior judges and one magistrate. We are operating under the Judicial Retention Act passed in 1976 as amended in subsequent sessions of the General Assembly, which establishes the procedure for retention of incumbent superior judges and magistrates. Amendments made in 2010 require the retention of magistrates. The date for holding joint assemblies for the retention of judges is set by statute to be the 11th Thursday of the session in order to give the Joint Committee on Judicial Retention adequate time to consider the judges who are up for review. This year, pursuant to statute which permits this, for VSA section 608, we've delayed this joint assembly from the 11th Thursday of the session, which was March 14th, to the present date of March 26th. The procedure to be followed requires that the vote be by written ballot. There will be two separate written ballots, one containing the names of all the judges of the Superior Court and one containing the name of the magistrate. We shall first proceed to the matter of retention of the two incumbent Superior Judges. Under the Judicial Retention Act, which establishes the procedure for the retention of these judges, nominations may not be received from the floor. Rather, each judge seeking retention must file a declaration of intention to seek retention with the Secretary of State, or if a superior judge is appointed after September 1st of the year preceding the expiration of the term of office, the superior judge shall automatically be a candidate for retention without filing notice. By this means, the name of each judge seeking retention is automatically placed in nomination and considered for retention pursuant to the terms of the Judicial Retention Act. 
In addition, the Judicial Retention Act provides that when a candidate does so declare for retention, the question to be decided shall automatically be, shall the following superior judges be retained in office? Accordingly, we will need tellers and their chair, uh, will we need tellers, and the chair now appoints as tellers, Senator Tanya C. Vihovsky of Chittenden Central District as chief teller, Senator Andrew J. Perchlick of Washington District, Senator Robert W. Norris of Franklin District, Representative Carolyn W. Brannigan of Georgia, Representative Kirk Wright of Bethel, Representative Leslie Goldman of Rockingham, and Representative Mark Higley of Lowell. We shall now proceed to the matter of retention of the incumbent superior judges. For these positions, we received a declaration of intention to seek retention to the office of superior judge from the following, John R. Treadwell and Lisa A. Warren. The question to be, side, to be decided in each of these cases is, shall Superior Judge John R. Treadwell be retained in office? Yes or no. And shall Superior Judge Lisa A. Warren be retained in office? Yes or no. The ballot which you will receive uh, will contain these questions in printed form on a single ballot. The terms of each of these judges is for six years, from and including the first day of April 2024, and until their successors are elected and qualified. To facilitate the procedure for this morning, the chair will rule, unless there is objection, that debate on these two judges will be received separately. At the end of the debates for the two judges, any general debate on the entire question shall be in order. First, we will receive the report of the Joint Committee on Judicial Retention, and the chair would like to now recognize uh, the chair of this committee, the senator from Windsor District, Senator McCormick, for the purpose of receiving the report. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Mr. President. Mr. President, Madam Speaker, colleagues, uh, I'm pleased to bring to you the report of your Judicial Retention Committee on the aforementioned uh, Superior Court judges and magistrates. In Vermont, uh, as in the case with many states, Judges are not elected except for the side judges and the uh, probate judges. Judges are appointed. Uh, when a judge or a magistrate's term is nearing its end, uh, he or she enters a letter of intent asking to be retained if they wish to be um, retained. In that letter, they, with that letter, they submit supporting materials resume, examples of judicial writing, legal writing, examples of decisions, a statement of their understanding of the office. A survey is done of attorneys and staff inquiring as to the candidate's temperament, competence, comportment, legal knowledge, fairness, and biases. In particular, we look at the possibility of gender biases and uh, regarding attorneys and litigants. Uh, there is a survey that is offered to us. We actually deal with a, a triple ring binder. Each of us has. It's a, a quite a bit of reading. There are um, in which uh, various people rate the candidate. Uh, for you know the high, uh, zero to ten kind of rating on you know is fair shows no bias is competent and so on. It's in the nature of the judiciary that they they deal with controversies, and so it means that almost every decision has someone somewhere who's not happy, and so we keep that in mind. But on the other hand, we do take all the comments seriously, and in particular, we look for patterns. Of, uh, to, to see if there is or isn't a problem. Uh, the committee interviews the candidates. There is a public hearing, and uh, we discuss at some length at times. Uh, we were pleased with the candidates before us this year. There are only three. Uh, this is a marathon in other years. and. Uh, that completes my uh, uh, comments as, as the chair. Uh, I also want to thank our, our staff. Uh, Eric Fitzpatrick is our legal counsel. And um, we had a wonderful staff 
in terms of just there's a lot of paperwork to get done, and Lindsey Schreyer uh, did an excellent job at that, and we thank them for that. Thank you, Mr. President. Chair would now like to recognize Senator from Rutland District, Senator Collimore, to give the report on Superior Judge John R. Treadwell. Thank you, Mr. President. John Treadwell is a distinguished legal professional who has made significant contributions to the Vermont legal system. His background includes earning his Juris Doctor with honors from the University of Wisconsin Law School in May of 1993. Prior to law school, he completed his undergraduate studies at Cornell University, majoring in government and history. Judge Treadwell was admitted to the bar in Vermont and Wisconsin in 1994. He is also admitted to practice before the U.S. District Court for the District of Vermont and the United States Court of Appeals for the Second Circuit. From March 2014 till November 2017, Treadwell served as the chief of the criminal division in the Vermont Attorney General's office. Then for eight years, he was cross-designated as a special assistant U.S. attorney, and during this time he worked on complex white-collar criminal cases and child exploitation matters. From 1996 to 2000, Treadwell served as a deputy state's attorney in the Chittenden County State's Attorney's Office, and in 1996 he represented the Vermont Department of Corrections in various legal matters. On October 6, 2017, Governor Scott appointed Treadwell to the bench as a judge for the Vermont Superior Court. His appointment filled a vacancy created by the elevation of Judge Karen Carroll to the Vermont Supreme Court. His judicial responsibilities include presiding over civil, criminal, family, and probate cases in both Wyndham and Windsor counties. He served on the Sentencing Commission in 2018, served on the Criminal Division Oversight Committee since 2021, has served on and is currently chair of the Advisory Committee on the Rules of Criminal Procedure since 2021. He has served on the Waiver Penalty Panel of the Vermont Superior Court and is chair of the Judges Committee of the Vermont Commission on the Well-Being of the Legal Profession. In terms of survey responses, Judge Treadwell's survey responses were excellent. 94% of attorneys recommended his retention. And if I could to read some of the excerpts of comments from attorneys. Without objection, you may. John Treadwell is extremely knowledgeable as far as law and procedure. He's a standout at running an efficient, respectful court. He is the gold standard, and too few on the bench are comparable. Judge Treadwell is very patient and fair. He expects attorneys to be prepared and to know their cases. I have seen him uphold unprepared attorneys accountable. 100% of court staff, assistant judges, and non-attorneys recommended his retention. The Joint Judicial Retention Committee interviewed Judge Treadwell and found him well-prepared, personable, and humble. Judge Treadwell expressed a love of the law and a deep sense of responsibility for the honor of serving as a judge. He continues to contribute to Vermont's legal system with integrity and dedication. His extensive experience and commitment to justice make him a valuable asset to the judiciary. Your Joint Judicial Retention Committee on a vote of 8-0-0 recommends that Judge Treadwell be retained as a Superior Court judge. Thank you, Mr. President. We will now proceed to any debate on the Superior Judge up for attention, Superior Judge John R. Treadwell. Seeing none. The chair would now like to recognize the senator from Addison District, Senator Hardy, to give the report on Superior Judge Lisa A. Warren. Thank you, Mr. President, um, and good morning, everybody. It's nice to see you all. Um, I am here to present uh, the floor report for Judge Lisa Warren, who was appointed to the Vermont Superior Court in October 2019 by Governor Phil Scott. She currently serves as the presiding Superior Court judge in the Orleans in. Orleans County and has previously served in Windsor County overseeing the juvenile and family court dockets. Prior to her appointment to the Superior Court, Judge Warren served as the state's attorney in Caledonia County, where she was appointed to fill a vacancy in 20, 2009 and re-elected three times to the position. She has also served as a deputy state's attorney, court clerk, and a private practice attorney. 
Judge Warren received her bachelor's degree at Boston College and read for the law, passing the Vermont bar exam to become a licensed attorney in Vermont. Just five months after her appointment to the bench, the v Vermont judiciary shut down in-person trials and hearings due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Judge Warren notes, however, that she was able to keep the Windsor family and juvenile dockets rolling due to the high attendance of litigants on WebEx via phone and other devices. After her transfer to, the Orleans, County, to Orleans County in September 2021, she became responsible for the criminal, domestic, and mental health dockets at a time when the court backlog was substantial and jury trials were just resuming again in person. A staffing shortage made keeping up with cases even more difficult. In addition, the opioid crisis has exacerbated the situation in an area of the state where no treatment court is available. Judge Warren spoke frankly of these and other challenges in her written materials and interviews with the Judicial Retention Committee. Despite these challenges, Judge Warren has been able to reduce the backlog in Orleans County and find ser serving as a Superior Court judge a, quote, very fulfilling experience, unquote. She writes, quote, I enjoy bringing resolution to litigants who have waited substantial lengths of time for their day in court while simultaneously seeing the humanity in each case, whether in the family, criminal, or mental health docket. I take pride in treating all litigants, whether pro se or represented, and attorneys who appear before me with dignity, fairness, and respect." Unquote. Judge Warren's file was not without some potential red flags. Several respondents to the evaluation survey noted criticisms of her courtroom demeanor and preparation. For example, one respondent wrote that Judge Warren is, quote, cold, without compassion, and difficult to work with, unquote. However, in interviews with the committee, she addressed such, such concerns frankly, thoroughly, and persuasively. Further, survey responses also included plentiful positive assessments, such as that Judge Warren, quote, has a superb judicial tem temperament. In my experience, she's calm, even-tempered, and compassionate toward all parties and witnesses, unquote. After reading her complete file and conducting a thorough interview, all members of the committee felt comfortable, if not enthusiastic, with recommending Judge Warren for retention. As many of you know, I am always a thorough and discerning judger of judges. So I jumped at the chance to provide the Joint Assembly with this floor report and committee recommendation regarding Judge Warren to counter an inaccurate and unfortunate press report that contended that I personally if only I had that much power, was holding up her retention. Uh, nothing could be further from the truth. Judge Warren came prepared, humble, and with a record worthy of retention. She addressed committee concerns and answered our questions well. She is a strong asset to the Vermont judiciary, and the committee voted unanimously to re recommend her for a six-year term, and we hope this body will concur. Thank you, Mr. President. We will now proceed to any debate on the Superior Judge up for attention, Superior Judge Lisa A. Warren. Seeing none, is there any general debate? There being no debate, before the ballots are passed out, I want to remind you of the rules that govern us. A, insofar as they are applicable, the Senate rules apply. B, no representative or senator may be absent from this joint assembly unless sick or otherwise necessarily detained. C, upon being called to order, every representative and senator shall be seated. D, it is the duty of each representative and senator to vote unless excused by this joint assembly or unless he or she is directly or immediately interested in the question being voted on. E, you are to remain seated while the tellers distribute the ballots. F, if a member is not seated, no ballot will be placed at the member or senator's desk or seat. You are to remain seated during voting and while the ballots are collected by the tellers. There is to be no milling about in the chamber during the counting of the ballots. 
You are requested to remain in your seats during the counting of the ballots unless it is necessary to step out of the chamber. If you leave the chamber during the counting of the ballots, you will not be permitted to re-enter the chamber until the counting of the ballots has been completed. If you are ready for the question, the tellers will now gather in the well of the House and upon receiving your instructions will then distribute the ballots to the members and senators of the Joint Assembly for this vote. I'd like to just check and see, has everybody who is seated in the chamber received a ballot? Is there anybody who has not received a ballot? Thank you.
If I could just get everyone's attention for a moment. We'd just like to confirm. If I might get everyone's attention for a moment, please. Just want to make sure uh, all ballots have been collected. Does anybody still have a ballot? Okay, thank you, sorry, continue.
General Assembly will please come to order. Please listen to the results of your vote. For Superior Judge John R. Treadwell, total votes cast 146. Necessary for retention, 74. Yeas, 140. Nays, 6. Superior Judge John R. Treadwell, having received the majority of the total votes cast, is hereby declared retained to the office of Superior Judge for a term of six years from and including the first day of April 2024 and until his successor is elected and has qualified. For Superior Judge Lisa A. Warren, total votes cast 146. Necessary for retention, 74. Yeas, 141. Nays, 5. Superior Judge Lisa A. Warren, having received a majority of the total votes cast, is hereby declared retained to the office of Superior Judge for a term of six years from and including the first day of April 2024 and until her successor is elected and has qualified. We shall now proceed to the matter of the vote on the magistrate. Again, nominations are not received from the floor. Rather, each magistrate who seeks retention files a declaration of intention to stand for, for retention with the Secretary of State or if a magistrate is appointed after September 1st of the year preceding the expiration of the term of office, the magistrate shall automatically be a candidate for retention without filing notice. This means the name of each magistrate is automatically placed in nomination and considered for retention. In addition, the Judicial Retention Act provides that when a candidate does so declare for retention, the question to be decided shall automatically be, shall the following magistrate be retained in office? <clears throat> the statute provides the the vote on the question shall be by one written ballot containing the names of all the magistrates. With respect to the retention of the incumbent magistrate, one declaration was received and it is as follows. Barry E. Peterson. The question shall be decided as follows. Shall Magistrate Barry E. Peterson be retained in office, yes or no? The ballot which you will receive will contain this question in printed form on one single ballot. A term of the magistrate is for six years from and including the first day of April 2024 and until a successor is appointed and qualified. After the presentation of the report, the question will be open for debate. The chair would now like to recognize a representative from Sheldon, Representative Oliver, for the purpose of receiving the report on Magistrate Peterson. Thank you, Mr. President. I am speaking on behalf of the Judicial Retention Committee to give our retention findings on Magistrate Barry D. Peterson. Magistrate Peterson began his legal career after completing Vermont Law School in 1985 and clerking with the U.S. Justice Department in Rutland. He became an associate attorney for two private firms between 1985 and 1988, and in the years 2005 through 2011, he was a cooperating attorney with Vermont Legal Aid, as well as an acting magistrate judge and superior court judge. During this time, Magistrate Peterson was also an attorney and partner with Peterson and Ruppel. This is a family-operated private practice that primarily litigated in family court. During his years of private practice, Magistrate Peterson dealt primarily with family law, landlord-tenant, personal injury, business, bankruptcy, and real estate matters within state and federal courts. Also volunteering as a guardian ad litem gave him valuable experience he would need in the years to follow. On January 6, 2011, then Governor Peter Shublin appointed Peterson Magistrate in the Family Division of the Vermont Superior Court. This ranked as one of the best days of his life, Peterson stated. Magistrate Peterson, now before us on his third retention, still enjoys this important work he does. He continually emphasized the need for sensitivity, compassion, understanding, and patience that is required to keep an eye on the best interests of all parties involved, especially the children. Magistrate Peterson further explained the difficulty managing hearings, where often many litigants are pro se. Often litigants have no understanding of courtroom procedure and protocols. With this comes a delicate balance of advising or guiding individuals through hearings without giving legal advice, all while adhering to strict timelines. Magistrate Peterson currently serves Chittenden, Franklin, Lamoille, and Grand Isle counties. He can also be found helping out wherever needed throughout this state. Magistrate Peterson prides himself with his timely turnarounds and believes the quicker this can be completed or accomplished, the less negative the impact has on the parties involved. 
Magistrate Peterson also enjoys working with the staff of all the courts that he is involved in, and it shows through on all his survey responses. Of all of the court staff that responded to the surveys, believe he should be retained. Of the 32 attorneys that replied, 32 also believe he should be retained. Magistrate Peterson demonstrated his dedication to the state of Vermont and the citizens he serves on a daily basis to our committee and the judicial retention recommends we retain the Honorable Magistrate Barry D. Peterson with a favorable vote of 8-0-0. Thank you, Mr. President. We will now proceed to any debate on the magistrate up for attention, Magistrate Barry E. Peterson. Seeing no debate, are you ready for the question? In order to do the question, I'm gonna go over a couple of the procedures again, but while I do that, I'm gonna ask the tellers to gather so we can save a moment. While they're gathering, before the ballots are passed out, you're reminded of the rules I announced earlier and are reminded of the following. You must be seated in order to receive a ballot and must be seated while the ballots are distributed, marked, and collected. There will be no milling about in the chamber during the counting of the ballots, and if you must leave the chamber during the counting of the ballots, you will not be permitted to re-enter the chamber until the counting of the ballots has been completed. The tellers can now distribute the ballots to the members of the Joint Assembly for this vote.
Just, just to double check that everybody got a ballot and then it's been picked up. Okay, continue.
General Assembly will please come to order. Please listen to the results of your vote. For Magistrate Barry E. Peterson, total votes cast 148. Necessary for attention 75. Yeas 145, nays 3. Magistrate Barry E. Peterson, having received a majority of the total votes cast, is hereby declared retained to the office of magistrate for a term of six years from and including the first day of April 2024 and until her successor, uh, his successor, <laughs> is elected and as qualified. There being no further business to take up, the chair now declares this joint assembly dissolved. Thank you, members. Now uh, we're off to caucus, lunch, and back at 1.15. Thank you. <laughs>